Wow. Thank you, Mrs. Paese, and our world-class chamber orchestra for the processional music. And thank you, students. We didn't even practice that. You did a great job with that. So uh, we practiced the inside ceremony. We're lucky enough to be out here. Um, thank you all for coming. And hello, Hopug High School, and welcome to our commencement ceremony for the class of 2023. I have had the privilege of being this graduating class's assistant principal just a couple of years ago, and now I'm proud to be your principal for one more day. And the whole high school team and I are so proud of everything our students have done and will continue to do. I also get to be the MC of tonight's events, and that means I'll be back and forth often. Some really quick pre-flight information before we start here. Please make sure your cell phones are silenced, and then in the event we have to make any emergency changes to our plan here, I will come up and communicate. But let's do this. To kick us off, I'm going to invite our class officers up to the podium for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then our incredible chamber singers will lead us in the national anthem. After that, our class officers will speak for a bit and present their gift from the class of 2023. So without further ado, class officers, please come forward. Everyone, please rise and remain standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now be seated. Good evening, class of 2023. My name is Carly Connolly, and I'm the class president. My name is Olivia Di Benedetto, and I am the vice president. My name is Vincent Barbera, and I am public relations. Uh, I'm Ryan Capisi, and I'm also co public relations officer. <laughs> I'm Anthony Palermo, and I am class treasurer. <laughs> My name is Brianna Salinsky, and I'm secretary. What an honor it is to be standing here and speaking to you all today. To our classmates, what a journey it has been over these past 13 years. We have some newer faces to Hop Hog, some that have moved away, and then the rest of us who have been here all our lives, sharing countless memories, laughs, and tears that bind us even as we go on with our lives. Regardless of our different backgrounds, being students at Hop Hog is a special connection that we all share, a connection that will be part of us forever. Parents, teachers, and staff, where can we begin to thank you for the unconditional support you've given us through the hardships and adversities, your wisdom and advice have gone a long way in leading us right to where we are today and will follow us years beyond. A special thank you to our class advisors, Ms. Kaminsky and Mrs. Brady, who have gone above and beyond for not only the six of us, for the other 282 graduates today. Your guidance and dedication throughout the four years have not gone unnoticed. The Hop Hog community has given us more than we could ever ask for. 
Not just in education, but memories we will never forget that we will tell our children and grandchildren. Life lessons that we've learned along the way and friendships that will last a lifetime for many of us. As class officers, we wanted to make sure our last action as students was one that would give back to the community that has built us into the young adults that we are today. To be honest, we officers had some difficulty choosing the perfect gift. We talked about planting a tree, getting a bench, or even putting a big boulder in the courtyard. We realized, though, that a tangible gift is not synonymous with a meaningful one. As our class gift, we have decided to donate to Defeat DIPG, a foundation that is of great significance to the Hot Pod community. DIPG is an extremely aggressive type of brain tumor, which has sadly contributed to the loss of lively members of our Hot Pod family. The disease first impacted our community through the loss of Courtney Tompkin in 2008, and just this past year, an elementary student in the district passed from DIPG. The loss of these beautiful lives should put things in perspective for all of us. We are all fortunate to have the opportunity to not only be here today, but also start along the path of adulthood. We cannot wait to see all the amazing lives you all go on to live. Many of us will remain friends and others will lose touch as time passes. But that 15 year reunion will be here in a blink of an eye. Congratulations, class of 23. This is just the beginning. I love you, mom. <laughs> That I love you, Mom, was in the script, so stayed on. Thank you, class officers, and thank you to the class for your incredibly thoughtful gift. And hello again, Hot Pug community, and for one last time, the class of 2023. Over the last few weeks, maybe even longer than that, and over the next couple of months, you'll do a lot of reflection and thinking back on the last 13 years of your life. All of that time in school has gotten you to this point where you are now ready to be global citizens and make impacts on the world far greater than you can imagine. As you look back and continue to look forward, my hope is that you'll feel a deep thankfulness and gratitude for all you have, all you've experienced, and the people in your lives. Lately, I have found it incredibly beneficial to start and end each day with a sense of gratitude. Each morning, maybe after hitting snooze a few times, I think about at least one thing I'm grateful for. Today it was for the amount of weather apps I have on my phone to consult with. And then at night, I do it again. But I think about one thing from the day I'm grateful to have done or experienced. Last night, for example, it was being able to see this amazing group in front of me have a great time together one more time at prom. It's helped keep me centered and focused on what's important. My family, my friends, and this school and this incredible community. To say I feel a sense of gratitude tonight for the people who helped get us here would be an understatement. To our Board of Education, including President Dave Barche, Vice President Rob Scarito, both with us tonight, members Colleen Capisi and Gemma Salvia with us tonight, as well as members Mike Buscarino, Dr. Larry Craffa, and James Kiley. Thank you for your leadership and your dedication to our district to make an event like this possible. All of us here are grateful for your time and commitment to the greatness of our district. To our superintendent, Dr. Don Murphy, and his team at district office, including Mr. Joseph Tasman, Ms. Bridget Siena, Dr. Tim McCarthy, Mrs. Rebecca Bilski, and Dr. Chris Smalley. Thank you for your support and your affirmation. I am grateful to have all of you to look up to, and I'm so thankful you've entrusted me with leading this school. To my close colleagues and my good friends, my assistant principals, Mrs. Darby, Mrs. Ferrara, Mrs. Paglieri, and Mr. Wald. They really do so much for this school, working crazy hours, including today, on things often unseen. You are all incredible people, and I can't thank you enough for the support you give me and what you've given to this graduating class. I'm grateful to have you in my life. To our district directors, Mrs. Gordon, who we'll see a bit later on, Dr. Michael, Dr. Wankmuller, Dr. Landor, Mr. Butler, Mrs. Hansen, Ms. Young, Mr. Campanelli, Ms. Lopez, and Ms. Brophy, many of whom are here tonight. I am so grateful to be direct partners with all of you to make our high school program the best it can be. To our elementary principals, all here tonight, Dr. Demuzio of the Pines, Mr. Gagliardi of Bretton Woods, and Dr. Rheingold of Forest Brook, and to Mrs. Christine O'Connor and Mike Collin from the middle school, 
I am always grateful to have you to work directly with and to bounce ideas off of. Because of the leadership you've provided your buildings, the students are who they are today. To our district's teachers, counselors, social workers, teaching assistants, clerical team, and all support staff for supporting our students on their journey, many of whom are part of our ceremony here tonight. The work you do every day always amazes me. I know we are also grateful for all of you working nonstop to support our students. I'd also like to take a moment to show gratitude for our school nurse, Ms. Muller. She has made this year and the last three years possible. Through the turbulence of COVID and the waves of other illnesses we've been seeing, she's been a rock for all of us. A huge thank you to our facilities team, led by Mr. Glenn Holm, building and grounds led by Mr. Mike Ruffini, and the custodial team led by Mr. Steve Nelson. Thank you. I have deeply valued your partnership in keeping our building clean and our grounds looking as beautiful as they are. We're able to pull off a year like this and a night like this because of you too. And to our security team, led by Mr. Caffrey, who's been running around all day, and Dr. Smalley, thank you for working all hours, including now, to keep us safe. The times we live in are unpredictable, but we're grateful to have you watching over us. And to all of you I just mentioned, especially Mrs. Ferrara, Mr. Caffrey, Mr. Nelson, Mr. Ruffini, and Dr. Landor, thank you for being the brain trust to help put together multiple different graduation scenarios with me. And I could have not have done this, and we couldn't be here without you. I'd also like to show gratitude to our PTSA, led by Mrs. Cavanaugh. This is her last graduation as she passes the torch to Mrs. Mashanya next year as president. Thank you for your years of service. Thank you to all of our parents, guardians, families, and friends in attendance tonight, and those watching at home. Without your partnership, your children wouldn't be here. And for that, I am also grateful. And with that, thank you to this class this truly one-of-a-kind class. Thank you for showing me in so many ways what I hope my own children will grow up to be. I can only hope as a father that they turn out to be like so many of you. I'd be forever grateful if that were to happen. Right now, for my kids, most of their time is spent chasing our dog around and watching Toy Story or Cars, but I'm sure more is in their future, or at least I hope. But for now, I'm grateful to have been your principal and to have seen all of you grow so much from ninth grade until now. There's a good chance I'll be shedding a few tears as you come across the stage tonight. Just know that they will be tears of gratitude that I got to know you, not tears of sadness. Congratulations, class of 2023. My hope is now that you'll continue to show your greatness to the world, and you'll always remember to be grateful for all you have and accomplish and all of the lessons you have learned here in Hop Hog. Start and end each day with gratitude, and you will find it makes such a difference in your life. Thank you. Now, as I've stressed in my speech, we are all here today because of the support from our parents and our Board of Education. A night like this would be impossible without you. Mr. Barche and our board are always working to improve things for our students. And so now speaking on behalf of Mr. Barche and the Board of Education, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Capisi to the podium now to address our graduating class. Good evening. My name is Colleen Capisi, and I am honored to serve our community as a trustee of the Board of Education. I am also grateful to Mr. Barche for allowing me to address you. Tonight we have gathered to celebrate the class of 2023. My youngest child is a member of this class, and over the years I've had the privilege to get to know many of you and your families. This class also marks the end of my family's 17-year journey through the Hop Hog school system. Sorry, a little the clamp there. I feel so blessed to have raised my children in this community, and I would like to personally thank all of the teachers, coaches, and administrators who have guided them along the way. Looking out, I ask you soon-to-be graduates to recall your first day of kindergarten. Maybe you were a little nervous, or maybe you were excited to finally go to school like your older siblings. I can assure you those first day jitters were not limited to you. I am certain there are many parents in attendance tonight who are like me. Nervous about how your day went, hoping you would make a few friends, and eager for the bus to bring you safely home. However, another thing happened that day. On that first day of school, we made a promise to you. By we, I mean your parents, your teachers, your coaches and club mentors, 
the Board of Education, and the residents of the Hophog community. We promise to provide you a quality education delivered in a nurturing environment with activities designed to promote your personal growth, to allow you to discover your passions and talents so that you would be prepared to forge your own path after high school. Fast forward 13 years and here we are. Among this graduating class, we have students who, ex who have excelled both in and out of the classroom. We have 18 students with a weighted GPA over 100, six National Merit commended students, three National Merit finalists, and I know of at least one student who obtained a perfect score on the ACT. Our students have successfully completed AP exams and there are at least a dozen IB diploma candidates. BOCES vocational programs have been completed by dozens of students. We have 43 all county, 10 all Long Island, seven all state, and two all American athletes. Musically, our ensembles have received numerous accolades and we have several all state recognized musicians. Our students participated in extracurricular clubs and performed community service. As for their destinations, nearly 90% will continue their formal educations, 5% will attend a trade school, and two members will proudly serve our community in the armed services. A promise made has clearly become a promise kept. Students, as you move on from the safety and comfort of our hop hog community, I would like to offer some guiding principles that I have found helpful throughout my own life. The first has already been shared with you by Mr. Weikhorst, but I'll give it my own spin. The first is to begin each day with a grateful heart. I know it sounds strange, but it really is helpful. Hopefully, hopefully you will have many wonderful days ahead of you but there are going to be difficult ones as well. There will be failed tests, strained relationships, and sick loved ones. However, when you stop focusing on the negative items that you cannot control and instead find positive things to be grateful for, your spirit will be lifted and you will find the strength to overcome those difficult days. The second is to always be curious, but never be judgmental. As you move away from the familiar rhythm of our hop hog community, you will find yourself in new places, facing new situations with new people. If you approach each of these with an open mind, you may just learn something valuable. Never prejudge and never label. Just because something is different does not mean that it is wrong or inferior. Don't set out to change another person's opinion so that it is the same as yours. Instead, strive to obtain an understanding and appreciation for that difference. When we are curious, we ask questions, and when we ask questions, we open the door to discovery and personal growth. Next, life is a journey best traveled on a meandering path with character as its compass. While it is important to set goals, use them to provide general direction only. Don't let yourself get so caught up in reaching them that they serve as roadblocks. Allow yourself to make mistakes, to explore new places, and take advantage of interesting opportunities. Sometimes doing so will set you on a little detour, and that's okay. Just remember not to compromise your values along the way. Finally, define success as your own personal statement. No one person is the same as another, and we would be foolish to believe success should be defined the same way for each of us. For some, it might be measured by the accumulation of wealth. For others, it might be found in the relationships we've nurtured. The important thing is that your definition is personal to you and aligns with your talents, interests, and core values. If you set goals for yourself and develop a plan to achieve them, you will be well on your way to living your definition of a successful life. All of you seniors are special individuals, and it is my sincere hope that as you move on from Hop Hog High School, you do so with a grateful heart, a sense of curiosity, and an eagerness to attain your own measurement of success. I would like to say to my child, Ryan, that I am extremely proud of you, and I love you. 
congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you, Mrs. Capisi. We didn't even plan that gratitude part. That was great. And thank you again to our Board of Education for your never-ending support. I would now like to welcome a student to the podium, Alexa Ingracia. Please come on up. Alexa will come up to read the class poem titled, Let Us Grow, to provide you with some background on the next piece as she approaches the podium. Each year, we have a contest to determine who should deliver the graduation poem. This year, Alexa submitted her incredible poem and was selected as the winner. It is on the cover of your programs, but now Alexa will come up to present it. Alexa, take it away. Just hold the binder, otherwise it'll fall. Yeah, okay. Okay. Plant a seed and it grows, they say. But seeds don't just grow on their own. Seeds need water, sunlight, air, pollinators, and some good soil. We were seeds planted in the rich soil of home. Nurtured by loving hands, pushing our way up to the sun, opening up our leaves and blossoming into a beautiful flower. Let us now be free to dance in the rays of the sun of our future, that golden glow of promise we have all longed for. Our stems strong, our petals open wide, ready to stand tall on our own. Thank you. Great job, Alexa, and thank you. I'd now like to welcome Dr. Don Murphy, our superintendent of schools, to the stage to share some, some words of wisdom. Dr. Murphy? <clears throat> James Aldaba said, do what makes you happy. My speech today may be a little unconventional. It will include my own stories and the words of the graduates themselves. Graduates, I'm hopeful you hear from me that you need not have an absolute straight line from graduation through college and or careers and into adulthood. Most of all, I hope you hear in your own quote so many words of wisdom. Carly Connolly said, the adversity will not last forever, but the pride you feel from overcoming it will. In many ways, it is absolutely unbelievable to me that I have the honor and privilege to be standing up here today. My path to this point as your superintendent was definitely not a straight line. When I was in your seats at my own graduation in 1990, I had a teacher chaperone sitting next to me, like Mr. Aiello, literally, Dr. Aiello, literally. This was no coincidence. I was voted class clown by my graduating class and I know the principal was well aware that I could be a bit of a scutchamundo, as my friend and colleague, Mrs. Bilski, would say. Truth is, I sat there that day with pride, with the fun of the prom in the rear view, and with excitement for college. Yet I also had a healthy dose of butterflies in my belly. What am I going to study in college? My future career? I had no idea. Natalie Mantega. Just take a deep breath and do your best. Good things will happen. I ended up attending Binghamton University, graduated spring 94. To this day, I have the best friends in the world from my college days, and yet when I left school, I was unclear about my future path. As senior year was winding down, I began to suffer from severe anxiety, looking around at what appeared to be the defined career paths of my friends. At times, I even suffered crippling panic attacks. Emily Morris, everything is temporary if you make it temporary. Adversities don't define you and things will get better. My friends from college had already secured jobs in various fields, some at big six accounting firms, I believe it's big four now, or at financial firms. Others were starting law school, med school, pursuing other interests. Me, I moved back home and eventually did land a job about a month after graduation. Or should I say I took a job? I did not make a lot of money, but at least the perks of the job were great. I now had almost nightly access to never-ending salad and breadsticks. Yes, I took my college degree to the Olive Garden. Side note, as a Murphy, I grew up uh, on chili, corned beef, burgers, 
uh, Elio's Pizza, Olive Garden seemed like a fine Italian dining experience to me. Robert Gennari, work harder and push through. The reward is on the other side. I won't sugarcoat it. This was a grueling time for me. I was dealing with the panic attacks, living in my old bedroom I grew up in, constantly comparing myself to others and worrying about my future, my career. I was not in a good headspace. And yet, during this time, I kept a journal. And even at the darkest time, I wrote in the journal, I don't know what I'm going through, but somehow I will get through it. Anthony Economico, always put in the maximum effort. It will always pay off. In 1996, I caught a break, landed my first real job in Manhattan at a brokerage firm. To be clear, I, en I ended up majoring in history at Binghamton, so this job was not an obvious career choice. I became an equities trader, and before I knew it, I hit, a, I hit it big a few years later during the late 90s. And yet, despite the financial rewards of the job, somewhere deep in my belly, I knew that this career was not filling my cup. It was not my passion. Kay Barrett, just be yourself and follow your heart. And then the world changed, and so did I. In 2001, shortly after 9-11, I lost everything in the market, everything. Money gone, convertible Porsche gone, city apartment gone. I found myself unemployed, completely broke, and actually moved back home with my mom. The Porsche, I traded that in for a 20-year-old Buick Century. It's a true story. I've jokingly told colleagues about this time of my life as my George Costanza phase this is a reference to the parents out there who may be fans of, of Seinfeld. Hello, I'm Don, I'm 30 years old, unemployed, broke, and live at home with my mother. So my prospects of finding a girlfriend at the time were not good. I basically internalized that I would not be meeting someone for a very long time. In some ways I was in shock, back in the same basement, starting over again. But then with the support of family and friends, I pushed forward. I know how the graduates recognize how their families have helped them along the way as well. Katie Kerwick, my family motivated me to always try my very best, but not to be too hard on myself. They worked hard for me to have the opportunities that I do. Abigail Mensing, my family, by supporting me my whole life, sticking by me, motivating me, and being there for me since day one. Frank Weissenberger, I'd be nowhere without them. They've supported me in everything I've done and I've incorporated their work ethic into my own life. What happened next that time helped define me. Broken at home, I embarked on a journey to find and then pursue my true calling in life. I went from Wall Street to a small Catholic school not too far from here, working as a first year teacher. At night, I was teaching math prep to high school students for the SAT. It was the summer of 2002. Not making a lot of money, but feeling fulfilled. Amanda Forgione, as long as you utilize your passion, drive, and perseverance, you can accomplish anything, so never feel too hopeless. And then one night, about a week after I started my new teaching job, I went into the city with friends to have some fun. They paid, of course. That night, I met a young woman and asked her for her phone number. You did that back then. Approximately three years later, we would marry and go on to have three incredible children. I joined Hot Pog seven years after that, in 2012 and was hired by the Board of Education as superintendent here two years ago. Binghamton, panic attacks, salad and breadsticks, Wall Street, going broke, anxiety, it all mattered on the path to pursue my real passion, find this my real, my dream job and build a family. So with that luxury of reflection, I'm, I'm able to see some common themes on the path. One, find your calling and understand that there may be stops along the way. Next. Family and friends will always be the ones there to support you. Three, whatever you do, work hard. Work ethic translates in any career. Four, interpersonal skills are critical in every career. Five, every experience matters. Lastly, adversity builds resilience. Now, I think a part of me wishes I could also now say that I'm completely free from the anxiety that has been with me for decades. I thought for a minute that the story may sound better if I could say, once you find your true calling, all of your baggage goes away. But then I realized I had perhaps a better message. I've learned to accept the anxiety as part of what makes me, me. It is not baggage. 
In other words, graduates, accept yourselves exactly as you are. Those traits that you may be insecure about, they're actually superpowers that help you succeed and make you unique. Embrace them. And graduates, what will fulfillment look like for you down the road? Paul Chung, I will know I have been a success when people do not define me by the amount of money I made, but instead define me by the positive impact I made in their lives. Gabrielle Nyola, when I am totally at peace with my life and enjoy waking up every day knowing I've done everything I wanted. Ella Walsh, if I helped people. Alexa Ingracia, I have lived and loved and have no regrets. In closing, I'll add one wish for all of you along the way to capturing your dreams and finding success. This quote from a movie. You can't get so hung up on where you'd rather be that you forget to make the most of where you are. I love that quote and wish I had hanging up through the years during some tough times to remind myself of that charge. Graduates, soak up every minute of your lives. Make the most of the challenges that come your way. I truly hope that all your dreams come true, and I know you will make all of us so incredibly proud. Remember, your family, the extended Hog family, will always have your backs. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. And we continue to be on an incredible trajectory here under your leadership. I also think you have some acting aspirations after the videos we've watched this year. So, good luck. I would now like to welcome two of the most outstanding people and students I've gotten the chance to know, our salutatorian and our valedictorian, to deliver some words to this graduating class, starting with our salutatorian, Caitlin Stevens. <laughs> Caitlin will be attending Purdue University this fall. So, future boiler maker, after you. Thank you. We can attest that time really does fly when you're having fun. Together, we have spent the past 13 years waiting for this moment. And I'd like to invite you all to take a breath and to look around. Think about how it will feel receiving your diploma. Take note of the excitement you all feel right now, waiting to toss your caps in the air and take pictures with your friends and family. This overwhelming feeling of pride is what connects us and commemorates this moment. Take a moment to remember what you're feeling right now, because we're all going to share this forever. This is our time, our time to shine. This is it. We have arrived upon graduation day. Hopug High School has created an environment ripe for learning and has provided a support system for many of us. We all have someone who has helped us along our high school journey. Take a moment to acknowledge that someone who helped you get here, whether that be a family member, friend, guidance counselor, teacher. Some people that I would like to thank include my teachers, my guidance counselor, Mrs. Winnetic, my family, the IB cohort, and my friends. I'd like to extend a special thank you to a few teachers, including Mr. Shehegan, Mrs. Barry, Mr. Kincannon, Mr. Edson, and Ms. Contino for always having my back and enriching my high school experience. The school is truly lucky to have all of you. As a class, we have found happiness in a variety of ways. Ice cream trucks and tug of war competitions on field day, making new friends, taking photos on the first and last day of school, birthday parties, school dances, homecoming, cakes for cancer, prom. Today, I hope that whether you are excited about the future or rather excited about putting high school behind you, I hope that you find happiness in today's celebration of our achievements. Getting here has been a challenge that our class accepted with grace and determination. We made it through a pandemic and distance learning, all while learning some essential skills along the way. We learned that success is dependent upon hard work and that it's okay to make mistakes and to ask for help. However, the most important thing we have learned is that we all have our own unique path and that we need to take pride in it and embrace it. I encourage you all to find your passion, your niche, and your place of belonging. I encourage you all to make new friends, travel to new places, and experience new things. I encourage you all to find your place in this world, to find what makes you truly happy. Whether that happiness is found in friends, 
family, work, or in yourself, I truly do encourage you to find it. Although many might tell you it's all downhill from here, I am here to remind you that life is what you make of it and that these moments are what we will remember in our future. Don't forget to live, to smile, to laugh, and to continue to have fun. And to the class of 2023, I wish you all a fantastic summer and the best of luck and happiness in your future. We did it. <laughs> And now I'd like to introduce our valedictorian, Connor Letty. Good evening, everyone. All, all fellow graduates, faculty, staff, parents, grandparents, siblings, uncles, aunts, cousins, friends, whoever's watching this graduation presentation. I'm Connor Letty the Hop Hog 2023 valedictorian. Basically a celebrity here. So, uh, I have to give a speech now, huh? How do I do this? Oh, I know. I'll use ChatGBT. Here we go. Okay. Hey, ChatGBT, write me a valedictorian speech. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members, proud parents, and my fellow graduates. I already did this part. Today, we stand on the precipice, precipice of a new chapter in our lives. As we bid farewell to our beloved school, we cannot help but reflect on the remarkable journey that brought us here. It is an honor. Nah, forget this. This is terrible. Close that off. <laughs> like, who has heard of the word precipice? And how many times are we going to reflect on our time here? How unexciting. Well, kudos to ChatGPT for possibly hooking your attention. I'm probably going to lose at least half of you in the next minute or two, but that's okay. You're all grown adults now, and you can make your own decisions. And today is the day to commemorate this transition. You know, the harsh reality is that childhood is over. This was a tutorial for life in the real world. Are there still going to be challenges? Yes. Are you all prepared for it? Yes. Are you going to like it? No. <laughs> OK, maybe perhaps you'll at least get a bit more freedom. I can make short work of this speech by making cliche statements. For example, anything is possible. If you work hard, you can achieve anything. Pursue your passions and dreams. Have a positive mindset. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Thanks, Wayne Gretzky. Et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, boom, done, drop the mic. Boring. I'm not saying you should not follow that advice, but you all have heard enough where it's common sense. So let me attempt to discuss a different matter that may not be so dull. We live in a new generation. That is to say, we're in a growing world with growing population, growing technology, growing economy, growing TikTok trends. And all of this means we have a lot more to account for. And due to our human nature, we like to do things fast. And this results in having a lot of work in a little amount of time. The goal of life should be to enjoy it. Unfortunately, however, I have a growing fear there will be more burnout and less time for enjoyment because of these new pressures. I mean, I'm sure all of you have procrastinated before, right? It's because you're overwhelmed. You're being asked to do many tasks all in a constrained amount of time. And being in that situation leads to panic, stress, and hence burnout. Here is my simple advice. Do as much as you can do. Now, you're probably like, this kid is crazy. He's telling me to do it all. Is that the only solution? Well, if you want to have an overconscientious, perfectionist mind like myself, have at it. I want to remind you, however, you are an adult now, responsible for your own decisions. The truth is that as humans, we cannot do everything. 
it is easy to fall into the misconception that everything is possible instead of anything is possible. Enjoying yourself is a matter of focusing on what is important to you in life, what you want to achieve. If minuscule tasks are holding you back and they won't make much of a difference in your life, ignore them. Simple as that. So yeah, that's that. And before I forget, thank you to my parents for supporting me and giving me this advice. Thank you to Mr. Kikannon for being the best math teacher. And thank you to none other than Mr. Leonetti for being an amazing swim coach. There you go. I did it, Leo. <laughs> I appreciate you, Hopcott High School. Although it was difficult, the spirit of the school, the activities and sports, and all the support got me through as it did for all of you. I said it wasn't going to be cliche, but what the heck. Like I said, doing everything is not possible. And if, for some reason, you have the tendency to shroud yourself in negativity because it feels impossible to enjoy yourself, remember the wise words of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Be mindful of your thoughts, Anakin. They betray you. And remember also from Theodore Roosevelt. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, Connor, and thank you, Caitlin. One of my favorite parts of being a principal is getting the early opportunity to work with and get to know these students and our class officers as they prepare their speeches. It's important because I get to reflect back on my high school days and realize how much more they accomplished than I did. But I also get to see the accomplishments I only hope my own children can attain one day. So Connor and Caitlin, and all of you next to me, Carly, Olivia, Ryan, Anthony, Vin, and Brianna, you're incredible people with amazing potential. I'm so proud of you, and I know we all are. As is that car. OK, we have one more speaker before getting to our graduating class. And our next speaker is our distinguished alumnus for the class of 2023. This person was chosen by our committee after being nominated by a community, community member, and we're thrilled to present this honor to Mrs. Doreen Gordon, class of 1980. Doreen, just some quick info on her as she walks up. Doreen graduated from Hop Hug High School in 1980. She loved it so much that she returned and made a career here. After being a member of the Hop Hug School District as a student, teacher, coach, and administrator since 1967, Doreen will be retiring on June 30th. We wish her the absolute best, but Mrs. Gordon returns tonight for one more time, where she has spent a decorated career as both a student and an educator. So without further ado, I introduce Mrs. Doreen Gordon. Good evening. Thank you to the Board of Education, President Dave Barche, who's here, Vice President Mr. Scarito, who's here, and trustees Mrs. Capisi and Mrs. Salvi are here, in addition to Mr. Buscarino, Dr. Craffa, and Mr. Kiley. To the central office team, Superintendent Dr. Donald Murphy, Deputy Superintendent Mr. Joe Tasman, Assistant Superintendents Dr. Tim McCarthy, Mrs. Rebecca Bilski, Mrs. Bridget Siena, who is home on maternity leave, and Executive Administrator Director Dr. Christopher Smalley. Staff, Distinguished Alumni Committee, Lori George, who put together all of the horizons, all of the clericals that work today, Mrs. Farrar, who put today together security, parents, family members, and most importantly, graduates. I stand here before you a bit overwhelmed by my retirement and receiving this accolade and the, and the opportunity to address the class of 2023. As I thought about what I was going to say, some thoughts came into my head. And one of the first ones is, what is in a name? Hop Hog, the land of sweet water, but no downtown, no Main Street, no Hop Hog Day like they have in Smithtown, Kings Park, Wisconsin. All this means is that the schools are the center of everything. The schools are our heart. Homecoming, kicks for cancer, sports, events, opportunities. When have you ever come by the high school and not seen cars in the parking lot? Kids on the field, in the gym, pool, sleigh riding, even though it's not allowed. Um, how lucky are we to have lived this experience? I've been part of this community as a student and employee for 55 years. That's a long time. 
I've seen many changes, but the heart of this community remains true. We are family who supports each other and helps all to grow to be the best they can. Along with my siblings, Patty and John, I was fortunate to be raised by my parents, John and Maureen Bates, who believed in caring, hard work, dedication to doing your service, and being the best that you can be. We played sports here and eventually settled on swimming. Being a part of the swim team taught me teamwork, leadership, and friendship. My sister became an EMT and is now a nurse. My brother graduated from the United States Merchant Marine Academy and has gone on to become CEOs, COOs, and CFOs of all different types of corporations. Lucky for us, two of our 12 cousins also went to Hop Hog, Paul and Christine Mullen. All five of us were Hop Hog proud graduates. My cousin Paul became a Marine and is probably the proudest person ever to wear Hop Hog swag. He wears it all the time, it's a little annoying. Christine's three children also graduated from Hop Hog. Remember your family, hold on to them. I'm so thankful for my husband, Brian, also a Hopa graduate, and our expanding family, our daughter Megan and her husband, Lauren, and our daughter Kristen, who's here today, and her longtime boyfriend, Sean. Megan and Lauren are also gifting us with our first grandchild in November. Thank your family what they did for you, how they supported you. I know the sacrifices my family made when I was coaching, going back to school, working late, working Saturdays, and grading, lots of grading. To my husband, Brian, who encouraged me to go back to school to be an administrator, something I never thought I would do. Thank you for believing in me when I didn't. I've had an incredible opportunity to work with amazing administrators, another part of my family. To the administrators union, thank you for your friendship and support. To the Board of Education and Central Office team, thank you for all you do and always keep students first. For almost 44 years, I had a different family, my swim program family. I began working in the swim program during my senior year in high school. People like Camille Kono and Joe Atari and generations of Hop Hog students have enriched my life and made, made it better for both the students who worked in the swim program and those who attended. And I'm sorry for all of you that I threw off the diving board. I see dedication and care every day. To be honest, I will miss this part of my life a lot, but I do see the flip side in having Saturdays off for the rest of my life. This will be the first summer that my husband and I have been off since we were 14. Appreciate the little things. How lucky was I to work with my co-class of 1980 graduate, Mrs. Taralucci. She has kept me organized on schedule and has been a true friend to me. You will find throughout your life you will run into other hot pog people wherever you go. To the departments I supervise, your amazing, dedicated, excellent educators who always put the needs of students first. We're also a family. We always put our hearts out there for each other and students. Thank you for always supporting me and all of our goals. There are not any better people in this world and to the class of 2023, you were lucky to have such dedicated teachers in the social studies and business departments and throughout all of your hot pug years with the staff that works here. Learn from them, don't give up. For some, high school is the greatest place. For others, not so much. But you know you were cared for, and you had teachers and family supporting you through your hot bug education. I know I did. I had teachers that supported me and colleagues. They're important. Let them know. You're the class that started high school during the pandemic and have shown your resiliency. Some of you have lost parents, close family members, have battled illnesses, homelessness, food insecurity, anxiety, and depression. But you're here today as a testimony to you and your family's perseverance. Life's an adventure. Take risks, not ones that are going to give you any physical or mental harm, please, but risks, risks that, will in, that will enrich you, engage you, and make you a better person. As John F. Kennedy said, I really couldn't you know, leave social studies out, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. In his inaugural address, he challenged every American to contribute in some way to the public good. Be responsible citizens. Take part in this great democracy that we have here. Leave your mark. Be proud of where you came from, because in Hopog, we are a family. Families come in many forms. Remember, you can always come back. Thank the people who have gotten you here. 
I have so many teachers, mentors, and especially my family who have helped me along on my journey, and I appreciate each one of you. Make sure you appreciate the people who have made an impact in your life. Do your best to make an impact on someone else's life. Give back to make your part of the world a better place. Be grateful and kind. Honestly, we have enough mean people in the world. We don't need any more. Come back, share your experiences and your expertise. You may not get it right the first time, keep trying. I wanted to be a teacher my whole life. When I was in college, there were no teaching jobs. So I changed my major five or six times I, until I realized I had to follow my passion. Do the same, find what works for you. Be persistent and passionate about what you do and what you want to do and amazing things will happen for you. It's a great honor to graduate again with all of you. I wish you all the best happiness and success in whatever you do, and know you can always come home to your Hop Hog family. Congratulations to the class of 2023 and their families. Okay, thank you again, Mrs. Gordon. All right, now, the key moment you've all been waiting for. So at this time, I'm going to invite Mrs. Lauren Brady and Mrs. Brittany Kaminsky, our senior class advisors, they're going to step down to the podium to read the graduates' names, and they will walk across the stage. I ask that our distinguished students here on the stage here line up on my left over here in front of these, this set of chairs. You'll be greeting the graduates right in front of the chairs. Connor, yep, back up. Good. We practiced inside. And that our district administration and our board of education, uh, we're going to ask that you step off to the stage on the right there and greet the students as they exit. Students, Mrs. Ferrara will come to your rows and ask you to stand. You'll then walk up, be handed a diploma cover, and come across the stage when your name is called. To our guests in attendance, if you can, please limit sounds and applause so all names can be clearly heard. After the walk, graduates, you'll walk off the stage and see our counselors under the tent after you shake some hands and they'll have a folder of stuff for you. This stuff, it turns out, is very important, so please don't leave it here tonight. And finally, I would like to extend my gratitude again to Mrs. Brady and Mrs. Kaminsky for serving as wonderful class advisors for years. The ride was pretty crazy, but you navigated it perfectly, and prom was also beautiful last night. So on behalf of everyone, thank you. And last thing, students, when you come on stage, a photo will be taken of you as you cross this side of the stage, so just be ready for that. So without further ado, let's get started. James Aldaba. Katherine Dow. Sarah Douglas. Anthony Economico. Amanda Forgione. Naira Fraser. Navia Gautam. Viraj Hedge. Kirtana Mahira. Dharmic Namanetti. Leanna Sheridan. Rhea Takar. Roop Takar. Riti Takar. Emily Walmitz. Rocco Caminetti. Colleen Chamberlain. Elizabeth Dolce. Delaney Dooley. Brooke Betting. 
Laura Blanda. Lindsay Blankenship. Bryce Bonsera. Jaden Bonsera. Megan Bowden. Dylan Braun. Garrett Brown. Joseph Bryan. Jake Brzezinski. Thomas Burke. Jan Bajanski. James Byrne. Olivia Byrne. Derek Cadet. Katie Kane. Pericles Calamaras. Jimmy Catalan Castro. Peter Cataldo. Crystal Cazares. Despina Chillas. Olivia Chen. Michael Chikatukto. Paul Chung. Michael Sierra. Deanna Clisi. Alejandro Colado. Jack Collins. Isabella Colonna. Emily Congema. Brayden Cruzy. Miguel Cuevas. Jillian Cunningham. Luciano Cusimano. Alexa D'Amico. Rachel Desari. Savannah Daytree. Juliana DeSico. Evan Delgado. Morgan DeMircy. Daniel Derby. Christopher D'Aso. Anthony DeFranco. Dominic DeVito. Jeremiah Dixon. Alexa Dobbs. Aiden Doherty. Jake Donato. Kaylin Douglas. Elias Domisos. Robert Domisos. Thomas Doyle. Logan Dubczynski. Jaden Duran. Liam Edgeworth. Joseph Arante. Michael Arante. Samantha Arante. Grant Faber. Sophia Federico. Samantha Farrenbach. Stephen Furren. Thomas Fitzpatrick. Connor Foley. Daniela Francisi. Jack Fry. Sean Gang. Dylan Garcia. Anya Garcia Lopez. Robert Gennari. Marina Giacumas. Christian Giamundo. Abigail Gilmore. Tara Griffin. Jose Gutierrez. Aiden Happy. Nadine Hassan. 
Kelsey Hawkins. Gianna Hennessy. Christopher Hintz. Colin Hodgkinson. Joseph Holder. David Holdorf Jr. Angelina Holchek. Emily Hom. Joanna Jacob. Luke Jada. Jean Garrick Jean Lewis. Aiden Johansson. John Giuliano. Rithika Cutla. Nora Keen. Alexandra Kelly. Caitlin Kerwick. Matthew Kinsley. Piper Kirby. Riley Kirby. Owen Kozalewski. Alexander Necht. Brandon Coster. Jack Krause. Michael Krilovich. Natalie Kunkel. Kishana Sudad Karasapuri Kilmanar. Nicholas Laspina. John LaMonica. Livia LaRosa. Elisa Lazari. Isabella LaFever. Sean Leonard. Rihanna Leopold. Seth Lewin. Marlon Ladano. Pablo Ladano. Kevin Ludazowska. Amanda Lynch. Tristan Machado. Tyler Machado. Carly Maggio. Rory Maggio. Jack McGill. Trinad Malisetti. Matthew Magnifest. Ariana Menegolt. Jason Manzi. Stella Manicus. Natalie Mantega. Kaylee Mariani. Jenna Marino. Nicholas Marasicano. Jake Martin Goodhart. Mine's Brooke McGowan. Corrado Mazuka. Brooke McGowan. Connor McGuire. William McIntosh. Alzir Mendez. Abigail Mensing. Stephanie Metz. Brandon Maletti. Sarah Maraki. Dominic Moshe. Frank Moshe. Damian Monroyd. Juliana Mooney. Emily Morris. Derek Mullane. Emma Monroe. Joseph Napolitano. 
Nicholas Napolitano. Gabriella Niola. Sarah O'Brien. Ryan O'Connor. Elizabeth O'Leary. Emily O'Leary. Cole Orhowski. Frank Pagnata. Melanie Pava. Tammy Papadas. Catherine Pattis. Mark Petri. Jessica Pisk. Ashley Posen. Joseph Provenzano. Samia Rafik. Carson Ramputi. Zanab Rana. Shivani Rayao. Caitlin Regan. Sean Renner. Brandon Ress. Steven Richardson. Kevin Reapy. Victor Racha Velasco. Nick Rower. Michelle Ramito. Tyler Rosenwald. Michael Ruggieri. Giovanna Salvaggio. Mackenzie Sanderson. Destiny Santana. Ava Santamoro. Dylan Serrett. Juliana Scaffa. Jack Scarfo. Cameron Scarito. Madison Schmalfus. Eric Trovich. Alessandra Scato. Joseph Salito. Gabriella Simonera. Kayla Sparini. Patrick Sheridan. Siraj Singh. Taylee Smallfolks. Jaden Smith. Noah Snell. Amanda Sun. Ashley Sun. Riley Sotilli. Georgios Sorlis. Ethan Sherugerine. Joanne Swink. Christian Tavares. Colin Terraciano. Giovanni Turquado. Jacob Torres. Marcus Traverso. Antonia Triolo. Bella Trocchio. Joseph Valenza. Isaac Viagas. Anthony Volpe. Frank Volpe. Ella Walsh. Braden Walters. Daniel Ward. Isaiah Ward. Frank Weisenberger. Sophia Welsh. Matthew West. Sophia White. Ezri Wilson. James Wisniewski. Rachel Yang.
Connor Letty. Caitlin Stevens. Carly Connolly. Olivia DiBenedetto. Vincent Barbera. Brian Capisi. Anthony Palermo. Brianna Solinsky. All right, let's hear it again for the class of 2023. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Dave Barche, our school board president, and Dr. Murphy, our superintendent, to come back up. Let our graduates come back on stage. Yeah. Mr. Barche and Dr. Murphy, while you're standing with me, I just want to thank you again for the standard of leadership you apply throughout the district. Hophog is seen as a leading district because of you two. So thank you. So now I'll leave it to you for the fun part. Here we go. And how about a round of applause for Mr. Whitehorse for having the courage to keep us outdoors tonight. Before the final step of certifying the class, I want to take a moment to recognize a few special individuals. The following students are committing to serve in the armed forces and will take an oath to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. When I say your name, please stand and remain standing. Thomas Fitzpatrick, enlisting in the United States Navy. Daniel Ward, enlisting in the United States Marine Corps. We thank you both for your service. Please remain standing. As you both know, you come from a special community. In Hopog, we are proud to honor all community members who choose a life of selfless service. I'd like to now ask any member of the Hopog community in attendance today who serves in the armed forces or who is a veteran of the armed forces to also stand and remain standing. And lastly, I'd like to ask members of the Hop Hog community in attendance today who work as police officers or firefighters, retirees included, to also stand. First responders as well. Graduating class, look around. You are surrounded by role models and heroes. This is your district. This is your community. This is your home. A huge ovation one more time to all the selfless individuals currently standing. We are so grateful to all of you for your service. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, Hop Hog High School Class of 2023, please stand. Audience, please be advised that after my short script here and the tassels are moved, you are free to celebrate your status as graduates. There will not be a formal recessional walk, so without further ado, it is my pleasure on the authority granted to me as the Superintendent of Schools and by the Board of Regents of the State of New York to certify the class of 2023 as graduates of Hop Hog High School. You may now move your tassel from the right side of your head to the left side. You have officially graduated. Congratulations.